Today on a spooky, a shizzle episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. What should have been a peaceful afternoon of playing dress up and tea park for a group of little girls turned into a memory of horror, as their purses and belongings would be seen flying across the room, violently crashing into the opposing wall. Just who or what wanted to scare these innocent children? And what could explain the bullet holes hidden behind the plaster walls? That story and more, today on this haunting episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd love to hear them. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you like the show, then hey, get yourself the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. You can't get enough of it here. Get the whole archive. Almost 10 years of our show. Almost daily. So it is the largest audio archive of ghost stories ever created. All of it's commercial free. We throw in a bonus episode every week. There's almost four. There's more than 400 of them now. Um, and you get advanced episodes of the show too. All ad free. Binge away. No ads. Just go story, go story, go story, go story. Check it out. Patreon.com slash real ghost stories or uh, ghostpodcast.com is where to get all of that. And oh my goodness. Breaking news. This is an NBC News special report. Good afternoon, NBC News. I'm Tom Brokaw. I retired recently, but I've decided to come back and uh, drink some of the Sanka that they have in the break room. I love my Sanka. Where am I? What am I doing? Tom, it's breaking news. I like breaking. I like breaking things, too. The other day, I... I broke a vase accidentally. My wife looked at me and said, What are you doing, Tom? I said, I broke a vase. <laughs> Tom, get to the news. I'm broke on NBC Nightly News, New York. Um, I guess my breaking, I go, what I have going on right now is uh, we have severe weather in our area as we're about to uh, record the show. So I'm, uh, I'm doing it. I got my window over there. I'm looking at I don't see any lightning yet, but. Um, We'll see what happens. There's a tornado warning. We that, that's... had the big weather the other night. Oh, here. my goodness. Here's the deal. You had. OK, so people don't know because I, I find it interesting on national news. Um, this is being recorded on May 2nd, by the way. So this happened about a month ago. If you're listening to this on the regular feed, if you're an EPP, you're hearing it the week of. It's like April 30th or yeah, something like that. There was a big tornado that went through a suburb of Wichita, Kansas called Andover. But everybody's saying Andover, Andover. Like nobody knows what Andover is unless you're there. But it's essentially part oh, of April Wichita. 29th. Yeah. It was Friday. Yeah. Essentially, it's part of Wichita. And oh, my God. This now Andover, number one, in my opinion, has some of the best tornado footage from the past. When or when Andover was hit with a tornado, like what was it? What year was that? Nineteen ninety one. Ninety one. Yeah, and there's uh, there's some very interesting footage of that. There's uh, the overpass, the underpass or overpass, whatever you call it. Um, that's an, a very historic, I guess. I remember seeing that like on the like the like the world worst storms. It'll be like on Sunday night after like the Disney movie, and it was always that video they would show of under the underpass, the tornado goes over it, they survive. And then everybody started doing that and people started getting sucked out of underpasses and overpasses and dying because they did what that video said. Um, but it's been, and here we go again. Uh, the other day, some of the most compelling tornado footage I've ever seen out of Andover again. It's like, holy shit. It was really interesting because it depended on what side of the tornado you were on. If you were north, south, east, or west of the tornado, because it looked like very different storms from different angles. Really? Yeah. Like um, my boss lives maybe a mile from the path of the tornado tops. Mm -hmm. And uh, his footage was like, the sky was just black. Then another friend of ours, Josh, he shot one 
where it was some of the most incredible mm. cloud formation I've ever seen. Yeah. But with blue sky involved in it. I saw Josh's too. Yeah. Yeah. And then like it was just there's a drone video, which is really mm. fascinating. That's the one so I saw was today. All these different angles. And they were talking about it on the news later about because I had been thinking the same thing. I'm like, it almost doesn't even look like the same storm. And it was this massive, it looked like something right out of a movie. It did. I've like never seen so, one. That that drone video was the most compelling to me of all of them. Yeah, and it didn't look real. And it was real. It was. I mean, it's like, shit, I know exactly where that is. And, and I, the I, crazy I, thing is that it ended up being the way the you and I are both weather geeks. There's probably people right yeah. now going, what? It was scary. It we was. Like, oh, but my friends that were... Um, Tony and I are real weather geeks and, and some of our friends who used to be storm chasers when mm -hmm. we used to work, um, they were storm chasing that day. They saw the tornado and they got some really great footage of it. But the crazy thing is the radar that the meteorologists were looking at didn't really show it as a tornado. So the other day? The guys, the chasers on the ground that saw it and called it in, that's what saved lives. Oh shit! And they're calling in, going, "We're eyes on it," and it's and they said it's an F an EF three, so it was a big tornado yeah. and um, wiped out like the YMCA. My um, one of the girls I work with, her, I don't know. First, she thought they could just fix the roof and stay in the house, and they're like, "No, it's too structurally unsafe." And so now I think she has to move out. For, uh, they're saying months. That they was a lovely YMCA up. too. I really like that it's one. Brand new. It, well, I it mean, well, nice. it's like ten years old now, but it was a, okay. But it looked brand new, it, and it was it was great. There were so many nice features of that one. But I mean, and the um, another reference um to uh, Jen, who used to be my, my ex-wife, who used to be part of the show, uh, she lived, when I met her, like across the street from the YMCA. So I know exactly where this thing went. And That's so crazy. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's that old. Really, seriously, I, I was know. thinking it was like three years old. No, it's actually, it's like 10, 15 years old. But, um, and, and her family still lives there. And I, I was actually talking with her that night. And um, her family's safe. They're all good. Um, and everyone's safe, but it, I mean, it came so close to so many things. Yeah. You know, like my boss and I were talking today, I said, you know, and I think it was on the ground for 13, 15 miles, something like that. Mm -hmm. So when you think about something that's on the ground that long and it only was half a mile, maybe to a mile away from your house, atmospherically, so many things lined up just right for that path. Oh yeah. But you are so close. Like his video, I'm like, I cannot believe you were standing on your back deck shooting that damn video. And then there was one of them, the tornadoes actually coming to them. Mm -hmm. You can see the crap, like big ass stuff flying in this tornado. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? I know. I guess maybe they were close to their front door and they're just getting ready to run in. They're all ready to run downstairs and shut the doors. I don't know. That's what, you know. Yeah. The tornado was coming towards them. I know. I Crazy shit. Well, I got uh, literally on one of my monitors here in the studio. I have severe weather coverage up, so I'm keeping an eye on what we're doing here. Uh, so if I suddenly like, I'm running. Oh, we got a tornado watch. Just got a tornado watch as we speak. So I'm not surprised by that. There's I, I'm not feeling good about this. Uh, anyway, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Uh, let's go to our uh, first letter of the day. Uh, it says, uh, I was, let me turn up our spooky music. Uh, I was at home resting after uh, tearing my Achilles tendon down in Florida. So when I got home, I was alone watching TV. So while lying on the couch, I thought I'd saw people walking by the living room windows. I thought no way because those windows are very high off the ground and at least six feet from the ground. I see a person looking in the window from the top of the window, of which was at least nine feet from the ground. There was nothing to stand on to do such a task, so it alerted me, but that's all I ever heard. Weeks after I healed from my leg injury, I was upstairs looking in the uh, area and found a homemade Ouija board. I burned it. Ever since then, my family members, who still live in the house, experience hearing kids talking when they lay down and go to sleep. My brother and his girlfriend lived there for a short time until they got their apartment. They claim they would hear someone knocking on the door upstairs to see feet under the door. But when they opened the door, no one was there. 
an experience my wife shared with me was the first time she ever had a paranormal experience. Her, her sister, and a friend were out of the friend's house. They placed their belongings down in the room to pack for clothes and to say goodnight. At a slumber party, when they leave the room, their purses are being thrown from the bedroom into the hallway very violently. These girls were like through the years old back in 1991. The house was located in West Memphis, Arkansas. Later in life, to find out that the house had people murdered in the home, you could still see bullet holes in the walls. By the time I was at my grandma's house and she lived across the road from the graveyard, one night we heard footsteps coming up from the sidewalk and then heard someone knocking at the door. And upon opening the door, no one was there. The time my wife was babysitting her niece and nephews, she looked out the window. She's walking outside to go home. She saw lights coming from the kid's bedroom window. She asked her sister what the kids were doing up so late after she left. Her sister replied the kids were still asleep. Also, her niece told her of a lady being in the room with her waiting to play with her. The apartments that they both lived in at the time had been there for many decades. No surprise that it is haunted. Thoughts on that one? <laughs> Sorry. In case you're wondering what this horrific sound is, it's my kitten purring. Um, he, she, he has the loudest purr ever. I don't like, I just remember when I was a kid and this, I remember my friend who lived next door, like the light would come on in my bedroom and we were not home. And it's like, so to me, it's very like, I lived that story. Yeah. Oh, I thought I lost you for a minute. No, I'm here. Watching the radar. I am watching the radar. I'm listening to you, though. But, um, yeah, so that's creepy stuff. You know, it's just creepy when someone is in your house when they shouldn't be in your house. And it's like, and things are happening that other people are seeing. Exactly. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, w when that starts happening, I, it's just, ooh, somebody like to to meow in there. Do you have an opinion? <laughs> yes, that's that's him grabbing the microphone. <laughs> Oh, my God. He's like the most adorable kitten in the world. If you've not seen this kitten, follow. Where is it? At Carol Hughes. Is that it? Yeah. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. My Instagram is just Carol Hughes. Super creative. Well, it's amazing you got that. I know. That's how long I've been on Instagram. Honestly, like, because that's just to have that. That's, yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, just at Carol Hughes on Instagram and see her uh, her kitty pictures. Oh, my God. It's the cutest kitten in the world. I got to say this. Um, we uh, over the if you've been listening to us for a long period of time, you've heard various pets that uh, that we've had over the years. And I'm I'm excited. We are getting one of our pets back here very soon. Uh, we have Sting, of course, which everyone knows. But some of you may remember Buddy, the um uh, I did. I did tell you. Did I tell you this earlier? I did. Did not you get Buddy back? Yes. Yes. Not my buddy. I have not my your own buddy. buddy. Yes. Tony, has, Tony had his buddy. Yes. But now getting his buddy back. Did I tell you that? Did we talk about this earlier? Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Um, we talked about many things, so I didn't remember. Um, but yes. Uh, so Buddy the dog. Uh, which is uh, what is he? He's um a border collie. I'm I'm horrible with the types of dogs. Um, and uh, he's going to come back and live with us again. Um, Jen had had him for uh, quite a while, but, uh, he likes land and pasture and places to run. And she asked if we would take him. And I said, yeah, he's a great dog. So he's coming back. So we got another, we're gonna have two dogs here in the studio now coming soon. And I think I'm going to start like a Facebook page just for the dogs together and their antics. Well, the and like more than once you've told me that you really miss that dog. I do. He was a, he was one, he's one of the best dogs I've ever had. Sting is one of the best dogs I've ever had too. They're both just such good dogs, but they both, um, they both are attention hounds too. So that's where it's going to get interesting of watching that dynamic again. Especially now that Sting is uh, an older dog. Sting was kind of a puppy last time Buddy was around. So more fun it's so funny every time you say buddy i'm thinking of my dog well i <laughs> gotta buddy. stop i've been calling sting buddy forever I, hey buddy come on like just like a, as in like friend not like i forgot his name and i gotta stop doing that now because the other dog's name is literally buddy <laughs> so it's like yeah i gotta i gotta break myself of this Although, I've got, yeah and yeah. my cats are rizzo and izzy so I, it's all the time rizzy and izzy <laughs> but 
Yeah. I used to have two cats, both named Rita. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. They're going to come to one name anyway. Yeah. No. The kitten will be like, if I say Rizzo, the kitten will think I'm talking to him anyway. The, uh, the cat, uh, as we're speaking right now, um, a little bit earlier in the night before we, oh shit, this is on track this direction. Um, before we, uh, started doing the show, I, I, we have a storm shelter in our basement or not in our basement, but in our garage, we have no basement. Um, and it's just a big pit in the garage. Uh, and, uh, I got the cat rounded up and I have, uh, bubbles. He's in his little cat carrier right now and he hates it. But it's like if if I needed to run and get him really quick, he would hide under something. Oh, yeah, because he's scared. Yeah. So I'm like, buddy, you're going to go in here for a little bit and we're going to get, you know, if I, and I'll let you out as soon as it's done. But I'm watching this. Uh, we don't have any warnings here right now. But what I'm seeing over in uh, to our left between Tulsa and here, there's a cell that is tornadic that looks to be going this direction. So we'll keep going as we go. Uh, let's go to a ghost story and uh, and hear it. Hi. Hello, this is Slayer Swanson. Um, I've been listening to your show for some time now, and I have a few stories that may seem out of the ordinary for most people, but for people like us, it may not be ordinary at all. It may just be something we all have seen or experienced. But my story begins when I was born. I was a premature and stopped breathing for five minutes, and maybe that was my cause to be a door, uh, foot in the door for the other side. Because after that, I have experienced many, many encounters that have boggled my mind and put me at different positions in my life. I live in a house here, and I had uh, an experience with this little girl who is about 10 years old. I mean, I've made contact with her as a paranormal investigator. That's kind of how I want to experience this stuff, is understand it more. My uh, experience with this little girl, her name was Elizabeth. I got the name using a pair of dowsing rods. And the dowsing rods, you know, they can be used as a definitive yes, no answer uh, device. I got the ans her answers as her name was Elizabeth. She was 10 years old, and she has been living on this property since the late 1800s, since she had died of a form of hypothermia or heart hypothermia itself. And I, as a paranormal investigator, I usually talk to these spirits quite often. Um, I have heard a disemboweled voice of a dark voice, a deep voice as an older man coming through the vents in my old home, in this old home I have, saying, leave, get out. I cannot explain it. This man who has been seen by my sisters is a tall, dark figured man who would stand at the top or bottom of the stairs depending on where you're standing. And I didn't believe the dream about this man. And I remember getting out of uh, getting out of bed and I knew I was asleep because I could see myself sleeping. And I go to this uh, basement stairs, I'm standing at the top, and I'm looking down, and there he is, this guy, maybe about six, six one, and he's wearing a small brimmed hat, and this small brimmed hat, you know, was just enough to cover about the top of his forehead, and when I looked at him, all I could see was his face. I couldn't see his eyes across the bridge of his nose to the other eye. And it was all darkened out, like somebody had painted over him. But he looked at me. He pointed down to a certain spot, looked down where he pointed, and looked back at me, back down where he pointed, and it was gone. This was probably the strangest occurrence that I had with this tall, dark-figured man. And... My house is the 
one of the original still standing houses in town that was built uh, when the town was young. And this house, you know, had been through a lot. You know, it's still original with a lot of things. You know, a lot of trim and all all this other stuff uh, with all the, in the, within the house. And there's another story I have that is uh, about a little girl that I come in contact with while working at my my job at the school. And I'm a janitorial, uh, part of the janitorial staff at my local high school. And I work, you know, evenings to nights and, or afternoons to, to nights. And I was working there after it, using, using my dowsing rods for a spirit session. And I had come across, across this little girl by the name of Claire, or Clara, if you would. And she said that her house was right behind the school that I worked at, that we are now going to be working on a new addition to this new high school. Well, I was working, trying to get my stuff done, go home for the night. I was at my elementary bathroom trying to clean up. And looking south, to, the, to the south wall of my school, or the south entrance, I, out of the corner of my eye, I see this little figure. It looks like the little girl, Clara, with a little blue dress and a little brown, uh, and brown hair. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. I looked towards it, and all of a sudden I see this blue mass just moving behind the corner. I was freaked out. I didn't know what I was seeing because... You know, honestly, I never saw this type of stuff before. I have all this uh, paranormal account, uh, accountings or uh, witnessing, uh, witnessing all this other stuff that is going on in my in my life. There are um. So many I could probably tell you an entire book of, but I recently lost my grandmother to uh, back in July, and she um, she was my last grandma uh, grandparent left that I had, and I lived with her for about three years, and when she had passed away, I had. A an anxiety attack the night before, and I couldn't explain what it was. It was just like something was blocking my breathing, like something was telling me that something was going to happen. I didn't know exactly what it was. So the next day, it didn't seem like it wasn't much of a a notion to pay attention to it. But then all of a sudden, she was gone. That later that night of, the, of that next day after the, after my anxiety attack, and she was um, she was in bed, and this is about maybe oh I'd have to say about six o'clock in the morning or so when she had the heart attack and she passed away later on at the hospital after all that. She um, she passed on, and then. About a month later, I had a, you know, I was all by myself in this house, and that's all it was, just me and my dog. But every now and then, my dog will look at a certain spot while I'm standing in a certain part of the room. She'll look at this certain spot, and I look there, and she's looking at the picture of my grandmother. And there is... No, I mean, I mean, she was close to the dog. Uh, she was close to the dog, and my grandmother at times would visit me in my sleep. Like I had dreams about her, you know, just the regular missing her type of dreams. But one night was out of the ordinary. I had dreams that I was awake, a vivid dream that I was awake, and she was sitting there in my bedroom. 
and we had this conversation. I, I can't remember the life of me what the conversation was about. But that was a heartwarming um it was a heartwarming moment, you know, as far as the dream was, because I remember seeing her as she was. But I've had uh, many other accounts as far as this house was connected to the museum that's in my hometown. And the museum that has a book's worth of paranormal stories, I was walking through the the museum and there was only myself and the curator nobody else and I walked from a one room to another room and out of the, when I stepped out of the threshold I felt as if somebody had taken their uh, index and their thumb and grabbed a piece of my shirt on the top right corner or shoulder and my lower left shoulder uh, uh, back and you know, proceeded to pull. And I didn't know what it was. That was the first time I had anything physical happen to me as far as something, you know, grabbing a piece of clothing or actually touching me. And I actually feel like if I, if I was in a room with someone else, you know, that would touch me. I haven't had anything like that ever happen again. But I have had... The physical sense, or the the feeling that somebody is always there, you know, I can always know when who it is if it's malevolent or if it's a nice, um, easygoing spirit that just wants to say, uh, be there and say hello. But like I said, I got many, many more stories and more to come as soon as I progress my paranormal investigations throughout my life. Those are just a few of my experiences with the, the paranormal and, and, the, and the ghost. I would like to thank you all for the great work you do for this show and keeping me entertained while I work at night all by myself. And I thank you for taking my call. You guys have a great day. Hopefully I can hear my own story on your show one of these days. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. What do you think? I think it's interesting how there are people like him who kind of, you know, because we talk a lot about kids having that experience, some kind of, you know, connection. But it's interesting, someone like him, it just follows them their whole life. Yeah. You know, like he sees all kinds of things in you know, it's interesting that some people are like, like my sister, she's sure. like that. And um, I just think that's interesting how he just has so many experiences, you know, and for his whole life, you know, and connections, you know, from his grandma to people he's never met. Mm -hmm. I just think it's very interesting how some people can be that in tune with it. Yeah. No, I, uh, I completely agree. Very uh, interesting story, and to be that sensitive is uh, its a gift. It's very interesting. Thank you yeah, for sharing and, that. And I think a lot of kids are really sensitive, mm -hmm. but normally we lose that as we grow older. I think yeah. that more things come in your brain. You're more distracted all the time. You got things to think about. Then you have bills to pay. You got, you know, things to worry about. Mm -hmm. And and so I think that, you know, our minds get so full of all the other things we don't open up to that yeah now i and, and it's almost like he never was able to shut it off i think some people are like that for whatever reason you i think some you, you can keep going in that that state i don't know how or why but for some it, it just doesn't doesn't go away interesting stuff it sounds pretty cool about it it's not like and i'm dead no. all the time no um because we've had those calls too where people are like it's these horrible you know evil forces around them all the time this guy's pretty chill about it. Exactly. Yeah. And that would be, I guess, the better type to have. I'm, uh, we're going to wrap the show up here in a second. I'm watching the radar and it's, there's yeah, like, I looked the, at it a minute ago. There's a good. giant signature of like a tornado on it. And the National Weather Service hasn't said shit. 
I just, I'd have, what happened? I have well, no faith in any of these night. anymore. I have no faith in any of this. Like if I can look at this and you could look at this after we've done this for 20 some years of looking at radars and doing weather coverage and we can see this and like Noah isn't saying shit. I just don't trust anything. It's like, why are we not doing at least a preventive warning on this? This is fucking, it looks huge. There's debris it's a, signatures. It's insane. I, I'm, yeah, I, uh, the other night, that was weird because that's what happened here. Because you called me and you're like, what are you doing? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm watching TV. Why are you calling me? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And you're like, no, I heard Andover really got hit. No, it didn't. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like, oh, it did? This is, I, 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 this signature is so crazy on this radar. I've never seen one like this. I don't know. I did. Yeah. Anyway. All right. We're going to wrap up this episode. We'll regroup, uh, I think, on our next episode, which will be airing tomorrow. Harper might actually be on it with us. I'm going to probably invite her in, into the studio here for our next show and see how far we can get in before we have to go jump into a hole in our uh, in our uh, garage <laughs> with our dogs and our cats. So uh, that's tomorrow. <laughs> on Real Ghost Stories Online. Uh, that's going to wrap up today's episode of the program. Let me bring my soundboard up over uh, severe weather coverage. Uh, all right. If you like the show, give me something here. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories Online. Get access to all our bonus episodes, past episodes, and more. It's all there for you to binge away on. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>